I've removed the body wall now from the three arms and also from the central disc. And I'll just point out that um, as I was cutting the set surface of the central disc off, I was careful to leave behind the madreporate that I showed you earlier, the little round uh, white structure. I'll get back to that uh, in a moment again, but I just wanted you to note that if possible, try not to remove that part of the skin, simply cut around it, okay? So you'll note that, as I mentioned, the internal structures in each of the arm are identical. And the first thing that we can see is this uh, rough looking, uh, sort of spongy, brownish mass on top of each one. Those are called pyloric cica, and they're essentially analogous to um, the digestive gland that we've seen in other animals, okay? So they function basically as, as a liver. They secrete digestive enzymes that the stomach then is able to use um, to break down food. So I'm going to actually remove the pyloric cica from one of these arms, sort of tease that off carefully and get that out of the way so we can see what's underneath. Now, what you'll see here, um, you'll notice that the color has changed slightly and the texture has changed slightly. These little structures all beneath here and also on this side, they're sort of roundish. These are called gonads. So the gonads um, obviously are involved in reproduction. That's where um, the sex cells are produced, okay? So there's some gonads. On this arm, I'm going to remove both the gonads and the pyloric cica so we can see what's underneath. And now we're getting into something completely different. Okay. So you'll note right away this sort of bony looking ridge here. This is called the ambulacral ridge, okay? On either side of the ambulacral ridge, along this surface here and along this surface here, you may be able to see some very small, um, round, and sort of jelly-like little structures, and those are called ampullae, okay? Or an ampulla would be the right word, so ampullae, okay? And ampullae and this ambulacral ridge, they're also involved in the water vascular system. Now I'm going to come back to the madreporite so I can explain a little bit how this works. Water enters the madreporite, which is a, a porous surface, and you'll note that it's attached to this, there's a little tube right here, okay? So this little tube, I've just broken it off there, but this little tube enters a series of canals. There's something called um, a ring canal, which runs along basically the circumference here of the central disc on the inside. And from the ring canal, water then enters what's called a radial canal, which runs, it's hidden and protected underneath this ambulacral ridge, okay? So water then is able to enter from the radial canal, it fills these little ampullae, these little balls, and they become essentially little sacks of water. When the ampullae are squeezed, they push water out into the tube feet. So you'll recall we saw these tube feet underneath here, those are directly connected to the ampullae. So in squeezing water into the tube feet, they are um, extended or retracted if water is then also taken out, and, and that's what's responsible for allowing them to move. So you can see how this water vascular system uh, essentially acts as sort of a, a hydrostatic or a, a hydraulic system to move different body parts. In case you're curious, um, these sort of, they look almost like uh, little ribs running along here. Those are called dermal ossicles, okay, sort of dermal bones or skin bones essentially, and these form uh, the skeleton of the animal, and they are connected to those spines that we saw on the exterior as well. So the spines and these dermal ossicles, they're all part of the skeletal system of this animal. Now, uh, we can look up here into the area of the central disc, and um, it's a little bit of a mess, I'll be honest with you, but there are some structures up here that, that are of significance. Um, 
this top part, this very soft, spongy mass, um, was at one part, uh, part of the digestive system, it was a stomach. The stomach is actually, it's a two-chambered structure. There are two separate stomachs. The one on top here is called the pyloric stomach, okay? And underneath that, we may be able to see some remnants of what is called the cardiac stomach underneath. And this is probably some tissue from the cardiac stomach there. Again, a little difficult to see with this specimen. But what I'd like you to know is that one thing that is interesting about the way this animal feeds is that its stomach is eversible, which means that it can be pushed out of its body, turned inside out, essentially. When the starfish is feeding, um, for example, say it's caught a bivalve and it's, it's holding it with its arms right here. Um, it's able to pry the valves open to gain access to the viscera inside. It then um, everts its stomach out through the mouth, so it pushes its stomach out through the mouth, pushes it into, uh, in between the valves of its, of its prey. The digestive glands that we saw earlier, those pyloric cica, they secrete gastric juices out and enzymes to start the digestion process basically inside the clam. And um, so once that sort of chemical digestion takes place, uh, the food is basically slurped back up into the stomach. The stomach is brought back into the body cavity and, and digestion finishes in there. And there is, this is a complete digestive system. There is an anus as well. Um, you won't be able to see it. This, this small opening for the anus um, does an empty out via the central disc. There's a small pore there that allows waste matter to be excreted as well. So that is basically the internal anatomy of a sea star.